So what's out there now isn't working. What's next? Well, I believe we have to get creative about our financial solutions, and the public bank is a big lead in that conversation, which is why we are hiring here today. Just think about it. We are here today to explore the possibility of taking our money, which right now is being invested all over the world, and bringing it home to San Diego, where we can put it to work for all of us. It's an incredibly exciting possibility. From helping local businesses secure credit, to helping local community banks compete and make more loans, to helping the city finance critical infrastructure projects like expanding high-speed broadband internet. If we can make the public bank work, the possibilities are endless. So thank you for being here today to join in this conversation. This is going to be, this is going to be a careful, deliberative process that starts with a careful study about the feasibility here in Santa Fe. Some of you have been involved in the public bank movement for a long time. Some of you are just getting started today. All of you will be critical to this discussion, and all of you will play an important role in this process, not just for our city, but for our great state of New Mexico. Thank you, and have a great afternoon. Thank you. 
want to go that. Now, the idea has been through all different forms, from a state bank to a development fund, looking at ways to tweak our finance authority to improve capital access for New Mexico small businesses around the state. I don't have a lot of time, so I, I won't really get into the details of the different proposals. But as I've thought more about it, it seems to me that the central concept that we're all working towards together is putting people in greater control of their own economic future. Both individually, when you're talking about mortgage payments, when you're talking about your job, when you're talking about your small business, if you have one, but also in terms of how do we relate to each other as members of society. And every time we move a couple billion dollars, every time we take a step toward creating a public bank, we take more control over our economic future and our own economic freedom. And that's a good thing, not just because it feels good to take a little bit away from Bank of America or Wells Fargo or one of these other folks, but by every, I think everyone across the political spectrum agrees that we put more control uh, and more authority closer to people, it's a good thing. We in New Mexico, in spite of the fact that we're often thought of as one of the poorest states in the country, and in many ways we are, but we also have huge permanent funds that are among the largest, not just in the United States, but in the world. And in a per capita basis, we have the third biggest permanent fund in the entire world. A public bank is a way to keep more of that money invested here locally in New Mexico and in New Mexicans and less of it invested overseas uh, through decisions that are made in North Carolina, New York, and San Francisco. And so that's what we're going to be doing. The efforts that are starting here in the city, I think, are going to be tremendously helpful, not just to the community, but to the entire state. When we come up with a new idea, I remember the first time I sat in the committee room trying to convince my colleagues uh, on the first committee that we needed to create the Bank of New Mexico. And they didn't, my colleagues were so familiar with the idea, they didn't know enough about it to criticize it. They just sort of, sort of stared and didn't really understand why, uh, why we want to do such a thing, uh, what the benefit would be, what the need uh, was to be addressed. Uh, and they just saw a guy from Santa Fe, and so they thought, well, this must be some kind of you know, Santa Fe bubble liberal idea that, you know, is, is sort of pie in the sky, you know, sort of taking, the you know, he's taking a break from the Birkenstock sale down the street, and he's going to talk about the public bank, and now he's going to go off and do some other thing. And that perspective is a really hard thing to deal with, because in New Mexico, we've got only six legislators from Santa Fe, and that means 106 are from everywhere else, places like Hobbs and Roswell, Jow, Farmington, Hagerman, Artesia. Uh, Raton, Silver City, all these other places, and their perspectives, not just on, the, on their communities, but on the world, are very, very different. As we've gone through the process, we've had uh, members who are contact members on the other side of the aisle from me who have been contacted by their own local banks and credit unions, who explain to them in their own way, on their own terms, how public banking, how community banks can benefit from an idea like the one that Craig is pressing here in Santa Fe, how we can benefit statewide from the ideas that I'm working on in the legislature. That's the kind of conversation that needs to continue after today is concluded. We need to have folks explain to their legislators, to their city councilors, to their county commissioners throughout the state how Dodd-Frank is imposing terrible burdens on the small uh, community banks and credit unions and how the state and the counties and the cities can play a very constructive role in helping these small businesses continue to support other small businesses in our communities. Javier, we let like mention this small business. My wife has just started with a small business here in town. She's six weeks from opening a cold press micro juicer. And if you don't know what that is, it's okay. I didn't know what it was when she first started talking about it either. But the biggest hurdle to her idea was not the idea that her concept it was not the recipes for the juice that she's making. It was not how do we, what do we call it and how do we market it. It was access to capital. And it took a long time and a lot of hard work to figure it out. If we're successful here in the city with creating a, a public banking institution, we'll have local control and local ability 
to help bridge that gap, to help these, these small, uh, small businesses at the very first moments of creation get over that hurdle and start to get down the road to being productive. And then who benefits? Well, we all do. We all benefit from new and creative businesses in town. We all benefit when more, more people are working, especially when they're working for locally owned small businesses. It's more tax revenue. It's more uh, money turned to the economy. It's all good, and it's a great purpose that we should all set towards at the city level. Not just for the benefit here, but because it helps me the next time I go to the legislature with an idea to create a state bank to be able to point to Santa Fe and say, it works, we've done it here. Maybe Albuquerque is going to get wise to the idea that it's helpful. Maybe the Burnham County kind of Commission will understand what a good idea it is. So if you can go to the state and say it's working, and it's working not just in Santa Fe, it's also working in Hagerman and Farmington and other places, that means we need to do it statewide and expand the benefits even further. So I fully support all the efforts here, and I want to really thank and congratulate the city councilors and the mayor for picking up this uh, effort and moving it forward and for Craig uh, for keeping the attention so focused on it. And in conclusion, I always ask uh, one thing of all of you, and that is uh, don't go home tonight and think that the person sitting next to you in the chair is going to take care of it. Or that the person sitting in front of you right now or behind you your neighbor in your seat is going to do the heavy lifting and the hard work. Because it's all going to have to be uh, us together working on it consistently and persistently until it happens. Uh, we, we know Peter Ward from the State Senate for a long time fought real hard to close that corporate tax loophole that let Walmart and out-of-state companies avoid the corporate income tax. It took them a decade in the legislature to get just a tiny little step towards that uh, goal implemented in law. Well, this is going to take a long time, too, but it doesn't mean that we should give up. Each time we have an achievement, get a bill through a committee, convince another member to come on board and support the idea, get one new city to adopt a resolution in support of it, or one small community uh, actually implemented some form of public banking, that's a good, positive step. And it might seem small at the time, but it really is huge uh, in its impact. So keep it up, keep going, and uh, I look forward to hearing the results of all the conversation. Thank you.
We are on our own. We are on our own because the machinery of national politics, the machinations of international finance, and the coagulation of bureaucratic power in legislative committees, boardrooms, and international cartels has become so great that the lifeblood is being sucked away from our local communities. We are here because good financing, financial thinking requires us to be here. We are here because compassion requires us to be here. We are here because our basic natures require us to be here. Because we can't stand still and do nothing. We are doers. We can't do that, just nothing, and go to sleep at night, thinking how we might answer the question, who's going to do this for us? What are we going to do with somebody else? We have to do assume that everybody at every level, and we can assume that everybody at every level, is doing the best that she or he can do. But now it seems as if that's not enough. Something is not working in the system, even when throughout the system, men and women seeking education, beginning careers, striving to buy homes, searching for ways to finance brilliant new ideas are constantly and hopelessly under finance. We're here today because cities and counties need new ways to finance roads and bridges, utilities and health centers, recreation centers, and rehabilitation of blighted areas. We're here because that sector of private banking that does maintain a connection to our local communities, those smaller community banks and credit unions, they are disappearing from city after city and town after town across this country. When I was growing up in the rural section of Arapahoe County in Colorado, we used to turn out every summer for a county fair. It was the biggest deal of the summer for all of us for Richard. The little bit national bank donated cash for the ketchup can contest. There was a bent where they put 30 very ferocious 50-pound boys and girls in a closed pen with 15 desperate 200-pound kids. And the kids raced around, grabbing the tails and hooves of those kids, slapping hammer locks around the necks of those kids, bawling calves, crying out. And then the kids would look up proudly at their parents in the stands and say, I got one, and then the cat would get it. But if any kid, kid could get a good hold and could get a hold of a lot of kid, he or she could go to the end of the Catholics, courtesy of the Littleton National Bank. One year, my 15 year old brother actually caught me, and their prom got a start for the ranch that he still owns today. The beginning responsibility with the, for him was that for the next year, my brother, who didn't like to talk to anybody, he'd rather talk to cats and horses and he had to create a relationship with the Littleton National Bank. He had to report every month how that calf was growing. My brother came to know the banker, and the Littleton National Bank came to know our family. Banks and community in those days were close together. Today, those community banks that keep it health like that are everywhere being squeezed out of business by the great global banks. And we are here today to talk about public banking because public-private partnerships can help keep some of those community banks and credit unions in business. Just so you know, thanks to the Littleton National Bank, my brother still owns a branch down in the Rock and Cactus Country, Arizona, and incidentally, he still needs a loan. We are here today because neither the inability of our people or of our local governments can be traced to anyone's lack of talent, willingness, or inspiration. We're here because financing as currently structured does not underwrite our everyday needs, our talents, or our dreams. We're here because so much of the money that might be applied to those needs, talents, and dreams is finding its way out of state to finance investments that will not be down to the benefits of this community, these people, these countries, or these dreams. It may go to Greece, it may go to Cyprus, it may go to copper mines in Africa, but it is not staying here at home. We are not here to blame. We are not here even to complain. We are here to get up off our knees because it is in our nature as Americans to be on our feet. Because we are engaged when we are engaged, it is in our nature to be engaged and not to sleep through the storm. We are doers. We are full of goodwill and high intention. We are so profoundly practical that we can knock your socks off with facts about the city's certified and financial report, 
or the history of debt-based money or public banking in North Dakota. We also hear because we are capable and ready to learn. Through the first half of the 20th century, people like us had to learn about conditions in the mind, in the long term, and among young, about young women selling their bodies on the street. And we had to learn of the great monopolies that had almost unforeseen fostered these very conditions. Ordinary people like us had to learn the details. When our great grandfathers and grandmothers would rather have been planting corn or tending children or simply seeking an seeking education, they had to squeeze out the time to understand the mechanics that had created these monopolistic conditions in which they then lived. In that century, Partly because of the optimism that comes with living in this country, ordinary Americans could not keep themselves from becoming engaged. And so we did. And so our ancestors did. Now, for the first time, since those early years of the 20th century, Americans are engaged in a new kind of education. We're learning the facts of debt-based money. We're asking the same questions as the Sumerians and the Greeks did 2,000 years ago. What is money? Where does it come from? Who has the right to create it? Because we are here in this room, we think that public banking is an idea that will also help us address the greater good, the common good. When we are looking at the idea of root and branch, its history and its variation, we can never stamp out self-interest, nor would we ever want to. But we humans did not get to, get to where we are today, acting alone and with disregard for the needs of our fellow human beings. None of us is alone. All of us depend upon each other. And even so, as we seek to attend to our natural self-interest, admirable and useful as that self-interest may be, we turn today in search of a better way to satisfy the needs of our communities as a whole. This is not just about Santa Fe or New Mexico. This process and the conversation that we are having is going on all around the country. We may be in the lead here today, but we are better, better than moving because cities in Vermont and Pennsylvania and Oregon and San Francisco may be the first to cross the finish line. And that may be good, but pride, and pride is not particularly admirable. All religious traditions warn us against it. But I am proud of the leadership of our mayor here today and the bride I am proud of our representatives from around the state who have come to consider this issue with us here today. I'm proud of the energy and enthusiasm and commitment of the future and of all of our extraordinary volunteers we've put together this conference today. To 